Hey, welcome back, comic fans. Mr. Q Comics, finally back with another comic book haul here. I know it's been a while. Has to have been at least three months since I've done a video here. Didn't go anywhere. Still collecting. Still been buying up books uh, as often as I can. I've just had a bit of a crazy ending here to 2019. Ended up uh, getting laid off from a company I've been with for, geez, probably 11 or 12 years. So that was a bit of a kick in the teeth. Um, you know, so I was kind of scrambling, trying to find a job. Luckily, things always have a way of working out. And uh, I did find another gig pretty quickly. So I didn't have a, a long gap. Um, got some severance from the old job. So a few months of double paychecks, which was fantastic. I, of course, have been going crazy using all of that money to buy books instead of doing the responsible thing. And, uh, you know, throw it in the bank. Hey, I figure if I'm buying the right stuff... It's a good investment. So I have actually been buying a lot of stuff over the past few months. And just with the change in schedule and, you know, I took some time off and I was hanging out with the kids. I just got off track here showing off what I've been picking up. I honestly have picked up so much. It's just been tough keeping up with sorting through it and just rebagging and boarding, you know, checking out which copies are the better copies I want to keep, what stuff I want to sell. It's just, you know... It gets overwhelming, and I got overwhelmed fast. I am surrounded by multiple short boxes of things to uh, still kind of sort through and reorganize. I did some organizing of my personal collection, but not nearly enough. So I've got a ton of stuff to show off um, over the coming months here. A lot of this stuff is old. I mean, this stuff is from, gosh, probably July. I think most of this stuff is from right after San Diego Comic-Con that I'm going to show off here. That's how... Uh, that's how far behind I am. So let's dive into it. Like I said, a lot of this is from July. So a lot of it was kind of right after Comic-Con news that I, I just grabbed as much uh, spec stuff as I could find kicking around that wasn't already picked over. So I don't read a ton of articles and pay too much attention to, you know, print articles, what's going on with Marvel and Disney Plus and all that. But I do watch a lot of other people's videos and obviously use the Key Collector app. So I try and grab stuff when I can, but it does get a little bit overwhelming trying to keep up with all the news so anyways show off what i got here i'll start with the cheap stuff as i usually do just some dollar bin stuff for one of my shops this is marvel age 81 uh just a preview of the acts of vengeance crossover uh probably vf shape i just like to grab some of these marvel age minor minor keys i don't even know if that counts as a minor key uh, but when i find them i pick them up if they're a buck more dollar bin stuff. I grabbed Amazing Man number one. I don't really know why, just because it's the number one issue. I know nothing about it, but it's in pretty decent shape. 80s stuff. I'm from the 80s. I'm hooked on buying 80s stuff. So I grabbed it. Um, a newsstand copy of Power Pack number two. This is one of the books that seems to have gotten hot. Not number two, but this series has, has gotten some heat. Number one, I see up on, on shop walls now, which is crazy to me. So... I saw number two in the in the dollar bin, so I grabbed it. New stand copy. Um, no key to it that I know of, anyways. All right, Power Man and Iron Fist, number 125. Uh, I usually grab last issues of runs. If I find them, you know, cheap, and this was in the dollar bin. Uh, it's from September 86, Mark Bright cover and art. And uh, this is a Christopher Priest story, and I've heard his name... Pretty recently, at least over the summer, I think he got in uh, in some heat or something with an interview, some interview with I don't know who, but uh, I think about his Vampirella run, and he was catching some flack over his portrayal of Vampirella or something, which I don't know why, because every portrayal I see of Vampirella is a half-naked vampire covered in blood. So uh, <laughs> I just remember reading his name, some interviewer trying to kind of pin him in a corner about something or other so anyways i didn't know much about him i did a little bit of reading i guess he's the first black writer editor in mainstream comics which is pretty cool so uh that's in decent shape it was a dollar bin book so definitely worth picking up all right other kind of spec stuff at that time i had been hearing a lot of people talking about the kind of the midnight suns i think uh so this stuff always seems to be in dollar bins so i found these I didn't have them. Spirits of Vengeance number one, which is part two uh, of the Midnight Suns crossover, I think, if I got that right. So for a buck, I grabbed them. I knew I had the Morbius number one, but I didn't have a lot of the other ones. So I picked those up. I saw a lot of people trying to buy the, uh, you know, the full one through six here. And I can't remember which books they cross over through. On that same theme, I grabbed uh, one of my shops had a lot of Morbius 
Again, these are all still in the poly bag. So I've, I, of course, have Morbius number one from my collecting days as a kid. Uh, this is from 92. So he just had it. They worked up to like a bucket piece. So it was like one through 14. I don't really remember who did the Morbius series. And I don't think I ever read this. I guess it's Ron Wagner covering art on most of these. And Ken, sorry, Len Kaminsky. And these are all mere men. So I figured what the heck for a buck. And I'll just show them off real quick here. Because I don't think there's really any, any real key to them. And I'm not the biggest fan. Early 90s stuff. Um... Just not not a huge fan of this art. I have my favorite artist, obviously, who all bolted for image. But after that, it just kind of all started to get not my taste. I don't know. There's eights. Yeah, so one through 14. That's kind of a cool black gold cover. Like I said, I don't think any of these are keys, but... Just because they have a lot, I grabbed it with kind of some of that talk. You know, I, if it's if stuff's for a buck, I just can't can't pass it up. If there's even a potential, you know, that it's going to do something. So, all right, I think that rounds it out for my dollar bin stuff. Nothing too exciting there. I did grab this just because there had been talk about Blade. I knew nothing about the series, the Max Comics line, Blade Number One, uh, Christopher Hines' story. And Steve Pew, Pew, I don't know how to say it. Steve Pew art, Timothy Bradstreet cover. This is from May of 2002. It was a few bucks. It's near mint. Uh, I don't think it's really worth anything. I just kind of dug this cover, which is, you know, looks like it's just, you know, the Wesley Snipes movies, which I love those movies. In college, those were like a staple in our fraternity house. You know, when there were no big nights that were going out, those Blade movies, the whole trilogy was on, and there was a case of Bush bar bottles on the floor. So we spent many nights staying up way too late watching movies like this. So that just that just brings me right back to college. So that was a cool buy. All right, I grabbed some of the What If books. Of course, there wasn't a ton. Everyone right at this time ran out and picked up that, what is it, What If number 12, the Jane Foster one. Everyone's head exploded over. Um, so I grabbed a few books that I could find. Um, I remember reading some of the What Ifs. Uh, so there wasn't a ton at my shops, but I picked up What If number 39. I just dig anything. Thor and Conan. Uh, this is, I guess, the first battle of Thor and Conan. Ron Wilson cover. And Mike Mignola on the inks. I love Mike Mignola's art, especially from the 80s. Very kind of simple, you know, compar comparatively speaking. A lot fewer lines, I find. And I just think that's so neat. Uh, and this is Alan Zellens on the story. So this was probably VF range, and it was only three bucks. It's from June of 83. And uh, for me, if I'm going to pick them up, and I can get them cheap, I will get the Bronze Age stuff. Uh, the, the late bronze, early copper age, what ifs can be pretty neat. So I also picked up a later issue, not a fan of this cover at all. Personally, what if number 44, I think this is volume two. Um, but this one um, was on the key collector app for, for, you know, 10 plus bucks, which I was surprised by. What if, uh, Venom possesses Punisher, Luke McDonald covering art, Kurt Busick story. It was, you know, near mint, a few bucks. So I grabbed it. I, you know, normally would only want to buy this stuff if I can get it for a buck. But this one shop, which I've mentioned, does a back issue credit. So if I'm paying three or four bucks or something, I'll grab it just because it gets credit that I'd like to uh, build up and put towards a big book. So, all right, I've got a couple Wonder Woman books here. Wonder Woman 18. Uh, this is the George Perez run. run. This is from 88. So this is one of the runs I've been trying to piece together when I can find these books in the dollar bin. Didn't read a lot of DC, but I love to try and piece together full runs of certain stories that I do want to read that I hear DC fans rave about. Uh, the George Perez Wonder Woman run. You know, I've been piecing together a lot of the 80s Batman stuff. Uh, Alan Moore and Swamp Thing, everyone always talks about. And I'll, I've picked up trades and read trades. It's just not the same to me. I don't know why. I much prefer reading the the originals the floppies and uh especially on the newsprint it's just the trades when you take these books from the 70s or 80s and they're in a glossy modern trade it just doesn't have the same i don't know the same appeal to me so uh these this is the first let's see it's the first full cameo of circe or her reintroduction with a new origin um 
So of course, George Perez cover story and art. It's VF range. It was only a few bucks. So I grabbed it. I know there had been some spec on CRC with, I think, the Wonder Woman movie coming out, the second one. I think. I could be wrong. Uh, I was I was buying these anyways just to get the run, so I figured, what the heck. I also grabbed 19, which is a pretty hot cover here. Um, this is the first full appearance of CRC, I believe. First full full appearance and cover of CRC. Again, George Perez, cover story and art. Both are probably VF range, and they were less than 3 bucks, so no-brainers for me. So, all right, I got a little more Wonder Woman later in the run, which I see these are pretty popular as well. Um, number 67, just a Brian Bolin uh, bondage cover, which I know there's definitely a lot of collectors who, who love to pick up bondage covers. I personally, I don't know why, not a huge fan of Brian Bolin. He certainly has some unbelievable covers out there, some iconic stuff, uh, but I don't, I don't know what it is. Just not not the biggest fan. So I grabbed this thinking I'd probably flip it or trade it at some point. Uh, this He has a lot of covers later in this run, and some of them are pretty pricey. I also picked up 97, and I don't think either of these are keys other than it being Brian Boland art. Uh, I just grabbed this because it's a DC Universe logo, probably mid-grade. I personally, again, don't. I'm not into collecting the DC Universe logos. I don't care, but I, I'll buy them. And again, flip those and put the money towards something else. If I'm finding them cheap, and I think that was less than three bucks too. Yeah, it was like two fifty, something like that. Whatever it worked out to you. So for me, it's definitely worth picking those up when you find them. If you do, uh, if you do any flipping, so you can kind of buy those bigger keys you want in your collection. All right, into a little more the Bronze Age stuff. Getting into the the better books here. Minor Hulk key, number 272, new sand copy, which is, I think, the first... Oh, I lost my place in my notes. First Intelligent Hulk. It's from June of 82. Uh, I think it's the third Rocket Raccoon as well. It's an Al Milgram cover, a Bill Mantle story, and Sel Basima art in, inside. Again, only a few bucks. Find a very fine range on this, so this is pretty cool. I've been... Uh, it's one of the runs I've been piecing together. The Hulk Bronze Age stuff, just these grab bags I mentioned before. They pack them full of Bronze Age Marvel. So they always put out 100 books in a lot. Like it'll be Series 5 and it's 100 books. And in that 100, they'll probably have put like an Avengers run in there. And if you buy enough of them, you can get a 40, 50 issue run. And it works out to like a buck a book. So it's a great way to complete, you know, Bronze Age runs. And this is one of the books I've gotten probably 40, 50 issues of Hulk. So uh, definitely cool to have. I usually don't collect runs, but... Because of those grab bags, I've definitely rethought it. Like, well, geez, you know, I've been reading modern books, and honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of some of it. And when I go back and read the Bronze Age stuff, it's, you know, it's what I remember. So definitely cool. Uh, picked up a couple of Master of Kung Fu books. These were purely, again, based on the speculation. I never read Master of Kung Fu. Uh, but this is number 29 from June of 75. First appearance of Razor Fist, which is awesome. <laughs> this guy's got no hands, just two swords, which I, I really want to see a panel on this guy attempting to eat something with his two sword hands. <laughs> so I think this character's a riot. I think I flipped through it too, and it's pretty uh, it's pretty awesome. Um, so this is a Gil Kane cover, Doug Mench story, if I'm saying that right, and Paul Gillisey art, I think. Man, some of these names are tough. So this is mid-grade. And it was only a few bucks, so I grabbed it again. A lot of talk with uh, about Master Kung Fu, and I don't think there's too much confirmed, so I keep seeing some of the keys spiking. And, you know, there's a lot of keys in this run, at least minor stuff, so I keep seeing a few of them kind of going up and down. So if I find it for a buck or two, I'll grab them. So also got 31. I probably got there late to the party, so a lot of these got picked over. This is from August of 75. First appearance of Paven. Again, Gil Kane. Doug Mensch and Paul Gillisey. Same thing, fine, very fine range. It was like four bucks. All right, this one, I lied. This was one of the dollar bin books. This is the best, probably the best pull of, of uh, you know, that shop when I was digging for a lot of this uh, Marvel spec stuff. And this is hot right now. Marvel Fanfare, number 11. So I found this way back in July. I just checking things on Key Collector and seeing this one spiking again since the trailer dropped for Black Widow, which to me actually looks pretty cool. I'm pretty excited to see that one. Um, who's not excited to see a Scarlett Johansson movie? Uh, anyways, Marvel Fanfare, number 11. This was in the dollar bin, and this is in 
pretty damn good shape. So uh, I will probably get this one slabbed and flip it. Um, I don't really care to hold on to modern keys like this. These minor keys related to the movies. I don't think these have any staying power for me whatsoever. But if I if this comes in in a 9.8 and I can unload that for whatever and put it towards a Hulk 181 or something like that, I am definitely going to do that. But pretty cool cover, of course, because it is... Uh, yeah, George Perez cover, who just has, to me, some of the best covers. He's always got so much stuff going on, so many characters. Uh, I love George Perez covers. Um, so it's the first appearance of Iron Maiden, Melina Vostokov, which I can't remember if that's whose cast is that. I, I went through the trailer. Rachel Weiss, I think, is plays her character. And I think there's, you know, spoiler alert, if anyone doesn't want to hear any, any talk about uh, the Black Widow movie. But just again... Spoiler alert from what I've heard. I think a lot of people think she could actually be Taskmaster in, in the movie. I'm not sure. I don't keep too up to date on the stuff. But anyways, definitely an awesome dollar bin haul on that. Dollar bin pickup for that one. All right. More Black Widow stuff. I grabbed Champions number seven. Probably overpaid on this. Probably got a li little overzealous behind the stuff. I think this is actually like seven bucks, but it's high grade. Uh, probably VF Plus. It's the first Dark Star and Yuri Petrovich, which is the fourth Crimson Dynamo. Cool Bronze Age stuff, though. Rich Buckler cover, Tony Isabella story, and George Tusca art. Again, this is Champions. I've never read this, but I have most of the run from buying those grab bags now. So just any Marvel Bronze Age stuff. I just love the art. So many cool artists, so many cool covers. I just, I'm addicted to buying the Silver and Bronze Age stuff, you know compared to the modern modern keys, which I really don't have much interest in holding on to. So. All right, down to the last the last few books here. Last Bronze Age book. I have definitely shown this off before. I keep finding this book, and I will buy it every time. Uh, awesome, awesome cover. Thor 229, um, which, of course, has one of the Hulk 181 ads and a Ghost Rider value stamp, so... This is from November of 74. Again, great Ron Wilson cover. Jerry Conway story. Rich Buckler art. This one's in very fine condition. And if I find this for 10 bucks or less, I'm buying it. And this was 10 bucks. So for you Wolverine fans out there, any of you like me who have not pulled the trigger on Hulk 181 because it is pricey, you know, it's fun to buy these minor keys. Again, there's three of these ads. For some reason, I always stumble upon Thor, Thor 229. It's one in Daredevil, and I think the other one is Marvel Premiere 19. I think those are the three books that have uh, the Hulk 181 ads. So if I find them, I grab them every time if they're in good shape. So I think I have like four or five of them. All right, some Silver Age stuff. Avengers 44. Again, this was Black Widow spec. I don't know if there's... Yeah, I don't know if much is going on with this. It's the partial origin of Black Widow um, from September of 67. Uh... I just, maybe the movie doesn't tie into kind of this origin story. I think it was one of the newer Black Widow series where they base, base this off of, basing the movie off of. I'm not positive, but it's a, a pretty cool John Buscema cover. He does the interiors as well in a Roy Thomas story. So, you know, spec book or not, I love to collect the Silver Age Marvel stuff. So I'm going to buy this stuff anyways and keep it in the collection. This was mid-grade for 15 bucks, So that was a no-brainer for me. I mean, I always hold on to the Silver Age stuff, specifically for Marvel. So even if it's a spec book, I'm, I'm happy buying those just because it's silver. So another one here, Fantastic Four 94, uh, early bronze on this, January 1970. And I forget, I think this is was tied to the WandaVision series. I haven't heard anything about this book. Uh, I haven't heard much about the series either. Uh, it's the first Agatha Harkness and Ebony, which is Agatha's cat. And again, these were, I think they're rumored to be in the WandaVision TV show, which is a, what a weird name. It just makes me think of Willy Wonka. Um, but, of course, Stan Lee's story and a Jack Kirby cover in art. Again, mid-grade, 15 bucks. Stan Lee, Jack Kirby. You can't go wrong, speculation or not. So, happy to get that. Last three books. I've shown this before, I think. Marvel Superheroes number 20. This is definitely going to be one of those undervalued keys. First Doom solo story. Again, first Doctor Doom appearance is going to be crazy money, but the first solo story, just kind of like with the Silver Surfer. Really affordable. Um, 
And it's the types of books people are going to buy when they can't afford the, the first Doctor Doom. And it's a Larry Lieber cover, Roy Thomas and Larry Lieber stories, and Lieber and Frank. Boy, I'm going to butcher that. Geosia art. Again, mid-grade, 16 bucks. That was a no-brainer for me. I think I've got three of these now. And it's a fantastic cover. I love that cover. So, All right, last two. I don't know if I've ever shown any of these off before. Um, not Silver Age, like most of my endings. But I've seen this book before, and it's it's not, you know, usually too pricey, but I've seen it like 30, 40 bucks. It's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, number one, the fifth print. So it's a regular comic size, red cover. Um, you know, and I can't, I won't pony up for a Ninja Turtles book. I love the Turtles. I love the Turtles, you know, growing up. But for me, that's a huge book. And uh, just for that type of price, me personally, I would put the money towards something else. But uh to get a fifth print, I figured, what the heck? They had two of them in my shop, uh, and they were only 15 bucks. They're not perfect. They're probably VF range, but, you know, definitely cool pickups. And then I got home and happened to open them up. I was rebagging and boarding them. Give me a second here. Bear with me. And I did, I did post this on Instagram when I got them. I'm going to open them both up. So I mentioned before, I'm in the northeast. I'm in the New England area here. And the creators are from New England, so it's pretty common up here. I wouldn't say common, but more common compared to any other areas that you can find a lot of the creators' autographs up here. So when I got home and opened these up, right on the first page, seven signatures and a little sketch. So definitely awesome to find that. Uh, so it's Jim Lawson, Eric Talbot, that's Kevin Eastman. It took me a while to figure out who the heck was who. Uh, that's Peter Laird, Steve Levine. I no idea who that is. So, and another one there. I can't remember all the creators here. Uh, so that had seven signatures, a little turtle sketch, I assume was by Jim Lawson. So that was awesome. And the other one was signed as well. Personalized to Ryan and Aaron. Uh, that's uh, Kevin Eastman there, another turtle head sketch, Steve Levine and Peter Laird on this. So just the three creators, obviously Eastman and Laird, the big two. I think Steve Levine did some of the lettering, uh, something like that. I can't remember. Steve owned a shop up in Maine that closed down a year or two ago. Um, but I think he's still up in the area. So apparently it's, you know, you can find a lot of signed stuff up in this area. So I was psyched to find that. I mean, for 15 bucks, I thought was a steal anyways for these. Uh, but to get home, open them up, and they're all signed like that was uh, definitely a nice, nice treat. So just put one back up there. But. So that is it, guys. Uh, that's it for the haul. Hope you enjoyed it. You know, please like and subscribe. I'm going to try and cram out a few more videos here in December. I know there's a lot of talk about what's going on with these new Copa, Copa, however you say it was. I am not, you know, I wasn't too concerned about it. I think I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. Mark my videos for adults. I kind of keep it clean for the most part anyways. Um, but I certainly don't want to mark mine as, you know, videos for kids and not have the comments and stuff like that. So I don't know. I'm undecided. I'm just going to try and get a few more videos done here. I see a lot of people kind of jumping over to other platforms. So I don't really know what I'm going to do. You know, feel free to chime in in your comments in the comments below. Let me know what you guys are doing. Let me know your plans. Uh, curious to see everyone's thoughts. I just can't picture a channel with 350 subscribers talking about comic books, getting too much heat personally, but <laughs> that's just me. Uh, I haven't researched it too much, but anyways, guys, thanks so much for for checking out the video. If you enjoyed it, please, you know, hit the like button, leave some comments below and subscribe uh, so you get some more notifications here. See you guys soon. Bye.